Hello, I'm Amanda Sherlock, Director of Operations Delivery at the Care Quality Commission. We have produced the following film to guide you step by step through the process of registering your out of hours service with the CQC. The Health and Social Care Act 2008 introduced a single registration system that applies to health and adult social care services. All out of hours providers are required to register with CQC by April 2012. By registering, you are assuring patients, as well as the government, that you meet the essential standards of quality and safety expected of all health and social care providers. The registration process is not designed to be a burdensome task. It is straightforward and does not require you to hire extra staff or to buy additional software to help you to apply. Most good providers will already have policies and procedures in place that will demonstrate how they are meeting the essential standards of quality and safety. Most of you will have enrolled on our website and you will shortly receive an invitation to register. Registration takes place on an online form. We will send you emails with details of your password and username. If you need any help in addition to this film, you can refer to the How to Apply and Your Guide to Registration documents on our website. There is an online help facility on the application pages that you can refer to while you are applying. And we have dedicated support staff who you can call if you have any queries. Thank you. Hello and welcome to this presentation. I'm Nicola Hepworth and together with my colleague Victoria Howes we'll be guiding you through your registration application form. About this presentation. This presentation will provide an overview of the registration application from the perspective of a registered manager and highlight the key things you need to consider. Before you begin you should consider other guidance we have provided. This includes the Your Guide to Registration and the NHS Out of Hours Service Provider pages on our website. To prepare for completing the form, make sure you have read the relevant legislation and have all the contact details and information you will need to enter. Starting the web form. The provider has completed their setup section of the form, indicating that you are applying to be a registered manager. You are now required to complete your section of the application form. Your login details will be sent to you in two emails, one containing your username and one containing your password. You will not be required to submit any supporting information or evidence. You only need to complete the application form. Key things. There are some important things you should be aware of. There is a 30 minute timeout that will close the form if you do not enter anything for 30 minutes. Remember to save regularly. Don't use your browser's back button. Instead, please use the navigation buttons at the bottom of the page. Save and quit when you want to leave a section or save and continue when you want to carry on through a section of the form. There is a help button at the top of each page if you need help at any time. Please do not input any confidential personal information that is not asked for, as this will result in your application being rejected. Questions you must complete are marked with an asterisk. Please answer the other questions as well if you have the information. Changing your password. When you log in for the first time, for security you are required to change your password before you can access the form. Enter the password we sent you. Choose a new password and enter it. Confirm the new password. And use the update button at the bottom of the web form page. The main menu. This is the main menu. This page is used to navigate to all the sections of the registration form. As can be seen, the provider has completed form setup and the locations and registered manager sections are showing. As a registered manager, you can only access your section of the form. This is the section with your name on it. The provider can view your section, but they are not able to edit it. You must complete your section before the provider can submit the application form. To open the section, simply click on your name. You can use the View Print buttons 
to see your section of the form without actually opening it. Overview of the form. Your section of the form covers a number of different question topics, including asking you for your contact details, details around criminal record bureau checks, identifying the regulated activities which you will be responsible for, and further information about yourself. We will now go over a couple of the parts of the form in more detail, including the CRB section, the activities section, and the declaration you make at the end of the form. CRB checks. At this point of the form, you will have completed the first questions confirming your name, address, email address and telephone number. As a registered manager, you must either submit a General Medical Council number or a CQC countersigned enhanced CRB number. If you are a medical practitioner and have a GMC number, you are not required to apply for a CQC countersigned enhanced CRB as part of your application form. Please enter either your GMC number or your CRB application number or your CRB disclosure number if you have received it. You must enter one of these numbers. More details are available on our website or through the help button, including guidance on how to apply for a CQC countersigned enhanced CRB. If you have provided a GMC number, you must then complete a declaration. This declaration states that you have had a CRB with a PCT and that you have not been convicted or charged with any actual or alleged offences since your CRB. If for any reason you are unable to make this declaration, it does not automatically mean that you will need a CQC countersigned enhanced CRB. We may follow up the reasons why you are unable to make the declaration as part of the assessment of your application. Schedule 3. Other information. You are asked to provide us with information on any professional membership you hold and whether you have the skills and experience to be a registered manager. In addition, under Schedule 3 of the regulations, you are legally required to have some further pieces of information available should we need to see it. You need to answer every question in this section. You do not need to submit the information now, but you need to confirm that you can provide it if we want it. If you don't have this information or can't make it available, please select No. You are then able to provide more details as to why this information cannot be made available. We may follow this up as we process your application. Again, please do not submit this information with your application form. Activities. This section is where you select which regulated activities you are applying to manage. Please select the relevant activities. It may be advisable to liaise with a person that is complete in the provider section of the application form. If you do not input the information accurately, the form will not be submitted. For instance, if you select activities which the provider has not entered on their section of the application form. It is important that you get this right as these are the activities you will be registered for. If you do not manage at the location listed, please select the I do not manage at this location option. Declaration. When all the other sections are completed, you can make your declaration. In summary, the declaration states that you agree all the information is true and accurate, that you comply with the Health and Social Care Act 2008 and associated regulations. Once registered, you agree to inform the Care Quality Commission if there are any changes to compliance with the regulations. You understand that non-compliance with the relevant legislation could lead to the refusal of this application. You agree that the information contained in the form may be used as conditions of registration. The email address you have supplied is the address to which we will send our statutory notice which sets out our decision to register or not. Complete. You have now completed your section of the application and can return to the main menu using the buttons at the bottom of the web form screen. Main menu. Back at the main menu you can see that your section has been completed. If you want to view your section we suggest you select the view print button. If you reopen your section of the application the status of your section will revert to open. 
In this case, you will have to work through the form and remake your declaration in order for the status to show completed. Without your section being completed, the provider cannot submit the form to us. You can now log off. Post submission. When all sections are complete, your provider can submit the whole application for assessment. This will include your completed section. We will process your form as part of the overall application. When we have received the form, we will validate the contents to ensure it is complete and does not contain confidential personal information. If we do identify a problem, we will contact the provider. We aim to have completed our validation check within five days. Once the form is validated, we will assess your application. This may require further information, seeking clarification on the information you have provided, or we may visit you. Our aim is to have assessed your application within eight weeks of your form passing our validation checks. When we have completed our assessment, we will make a judgment on your application and send you a notice of decision to register you or a notice of proposal to refuse. You can find more information on what this means on our website. Further information and assistance. Please remember to discuss your application with your provider. For further information and assistance, use the help buttons within the web form and the guidance we have produced. Additional information can be found on our website and our provider reference group may also be helpful. Finally, our National Contact Centre is available for those occasions where you cannot find the advice you are looking for. Please call or email them using the details shown.